Hello, my name's Chris Gorse. I'm here with John Sturgist, who's a material scientist and a chartered environmentalist. We've been talking through some issues of sustainability um, and more recently the issue of fresh water and water supply. Um, John, what, what do you think is the, the, the main uh, the problems that we're facing and issues that we've got to face at the moment with regard to uh, fresh water? It comes down to two things really, a finite size of water supply and an expanding population. In the, in the world, there is a limited supply of water, 1.4 billion cubic kilometres. And if you imagine that as a single droplet, you're talking about a droplet about 1,400 kilometres in diameter, compared with, say, 12,500 kilometres from the diameter of the Earth. Mm -hmm. So the, the water supply occupies that sort of volume. But 97% of that is saline. It's water in the oceans and seas. Right. So it's the 3% that's fresh water that we rely on for our drinking and all the rest. Now it's not even as simple as that. 3% uh, of that translates to a volume of water about 430 kilometers in diameter, much smaller. About two thirds of that is locked up as ice in the ice caps in Greenland and Antarctica. Mm. So in fact, the liquid fresh water if you say half of it, it's about 340 kilometers diameter globule, but it'll be less than that. It'll be under 300 kilometers diameter. That is the fresh water that we have. And that is fixed, essentially. Um, we have what we call the hydrological cycle. Uh, the, the sun shines, it evaporates water from the seas and the oceans. Mm. And this passes into the atmosphere as water vapor. Um, it then moves around in the atmosphere, drifts over land, and when it meets rising ground, it's, it's lifted up and it cools, gets below its saturation temperature, and precipitation happens, either water, rain, or snow at very high altitudes. And this water then um, makes its way, trickling down through soil and rock or into the rivers and streams, and ultimately makes its way back into the ocean, taking with it whatever salts and bits of decaying yeah. matter and yeah. whatever that's picked up with it. So that's, so that's the, the sort of short hydrological cycle. Yeah. But there is also the long hydrological cycle. For example, there are many, many cubic kilometers of water underneath the Sahara Desert that have been there for 10 or 20,000 years since the last ice age. At that time, the Sahara Desert was a fertile mm. Mm. Uh, area of the planet. And that water underneath is still there. But that's our sort of long hydrological cycle. So this is the problem. Finite supplies, expanding population. Mm. So, I mean, most people, though, are still going to get their water from the taps. And, and, and maybe even with that sort of small globule that we're talking about, what, in real terms, how, 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 what, what, what sort of short-term things are going to affect us in, in terms of water supply? We, well, the thing, we face the, thing, the thing you have to remember is it doesn't afflict all areas of the, 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 the planet the same. For example, in Iceland you've got 300,000 people, less than half the population of Leeds, and they have, as far as they're concerned, infinite supplies of water. They have boundless supplies of water. Yeah. Yeah. But in other parts of the world it's quite different. For example, in India we have the fastest growing population on the planet by right. 2050 the Indian nation will be the most populous nation on earth. Now they uh, have a rural landscape, a lot of it, where a lot of farming goes on. They grow a lot of their own food. And the problem the farmers are currently facing is their wells. They're having to sink their wells deeper and deeper year by year yeah. to get the water out. So it's like an arms race. The water table's going down, more and more is being abstracted and it's not being replaced at the rate at which it's being abstracted. So therefore, long term, it's not sustainable. Yeah. And I suppose that sort, that sort of thing where people are having to dig deep for the wells is affecting uh, our food supplies and, and our economy as well. I'm just trying to think of the things that people sometimes, they, they go, as long as we've got water, we're okay. Yeah. But yeah. They, these things now are a global issue that are affecting us at home. Yes, we use water of course for drinking purposes, yeah. for the sustaining of life, but we also use it for washing 
Uh, it's used in many industrial processes and uh, in Victorian times many industrialists thought that it was quite okay to pour whatever obnoxious liquids they produced straight down the drain into the streams. But of course we now realize that that is again unsustainable mm. and we have now to, industrial plants have to treat their water and extract all the harmful chemicals because otherwise we shall we shall pollute the limited water supplies we have and we'll be in mm. an even bigger problem. So yeah. it, it, is a, it's a, it is a serious problem and, and it's it's one that people have seen the energy crisis and they've seen the depletion of materials as a serious uh, potential constriction on our future development but water supplies are being perceived now as another key limitation on what we can do and for the future they will be posing serious yeah. implications yeah. for sustainability. Yeah. So the need for water harvesting and recycling grey water yes. is going to become a more important uh, issue. That's right and in terms of if you look at materials you, you talk about embodied energies and embodied yeah. CO2 values and uh, things of that sort. Uh, I believe students now need to be taught about what is the specific energy consumption with making a, kil a kilogram of this material because the, mm. the water implications of using materials are going to become an issue. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's all, it's like an ecological system, it's all interlinked. Yeah, yeah. So we can't actually forget any of these items to actually address sustainability in construction at all. Not really, no, you, you do have to, the, you do have to stand back and look at the big yeah. picture. The CO2 thing sometimes is taking over. When yes, it, it is. When it, while it is important, we've got to also consider these other resources. Yes, I believe so. Um, CO2 has rather taken over the agenda and it's undoubtedly a serious problem, it's an anthropogenic thing and uh, it will contribute but um, we yet don't fully understand the mechanism of cloud formation in the upper atmosphere, this is associated of course with water again and, and we're 95% of the greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere are water vapour right. and we do, that's an area that we do need to address and, and get a proper understanding of rather than saying it's just all down to CO2. Yeah. It's, you know, water is a, is a crucial... That's a global, a global warming issue that yeah. we're talking yeah. about. It's a global warming, yes, mm. yes. Mm. Um, but of course it has spin-offs for precipitation and yeah. water supplies as yeah. well. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a serious issue. Okay. Thank you ever so much for that, John. Um, we're going to do a series of uh, uh, talks and interviews on sustainability. So keep uh, uh, your eyes open for the next uh, YouTube posting which will be on this CO2 and other issues. Thank you.